Last month, Russia became the first country in the world to approve a vaccine for COVID-19. Now, the first batch of the vaccine is ready for public distribution. The vaccine is called Sputnik V, in homage to the world's first satellite launched by the Soviet Union. Here's how the vaccine works. The outer coating of SARS-CoV-2, the virus that causes COVID-19, is covered in spike proteins that give the virus its crown-like appearance. The spike protein possesses receptor-binding domains, or RBDs, that the coronavirus uses to pry open receptors before penetrating the cellular membrane. Sputnik V employs a gene with the code for the spike protein that the coronavirus uses to enter a human cell. The spike protein gene is cut from the coronavirus and inserted into a vector, a virus that is weakened so that it cannot grow inside the human body after injection. For its vectors, Sputnik V uses adenoviruses that cause the common cold. Two different adenoviruses, RAD26 and RAD5, are employed for the first and second doses to boost the effectiveness of the vaccine. The genes from these adenoviruses that cause infection are removed, while the gene with the code of the spike protein is inserted. Adenoviruses are popular as vectors because they are easy to engineer. They are deemed safe because they have been with humans for thousands of years. The modified viruses should mimic a real coronavirus infection and teach the immune system to recognize COVID-19. Although they do not cause infection, the modified viruses should still trigger the body to produce antibodies that would neutralize the coronavirus. The vaccine is being developed by the Gamaleya Research Institute of Epidemiology and Microbiology in Moscow. Russia's health ministry said on Tuesday, September 8th, that the first batch of the vaccine passed all necessary quality tests and a countrywide COVID-19 vaccination campaign will begin next month. However, serious questions remain. The vaccine has not even started Phase 3 trials, and if something goes wrong with Sputnik V, it could seriously harm public perception about a COVID-19 vaccine. Quoted in The Lancet, Dean of the Brown University School of Public Health said, We have no idea whether this vaccine is safe or whether it works. I do not think it makes sense. The difference between doing things correctly and not doing things correctly is a matter of a few months. It seems like a very small gain, and the middle of a pandemic is not the time to be cutting corners. Still, the vaccine elicited a strong immune response in all 76 patients tested in its Phase 1 and Phase 2 trials. We won't know for sure until a Phase 3 trial has been conducted and Russia has made the results available. Would you get the Russian vaccine now if you had the chance? Or would you wait for this vaccine from Oxford University, which is currently in Phase 3 testing on 30,000 patients in the US, the UK, Brazil, and South Africa? Oxford is starting human trials for the first coronavirus vaccine in Europe. Alyssa Granado is one of the first two volunteers to receive the experimental vaccine. Citing the University of Oxford, the BBC reports on April 23rd that the experimental COVID-19 vaccine takes the coronavirus's genetic material and inserts the substance into adenoviruses that are responsible for the common cold. The cold viruses are weakened so that they cannot grow inside the human body after injection. The modified viruses should make the human cells produce the same spike proteins that stud the surface of the coronaviruses and teach the immune system to recognize COVID-19. When vaccine recipients actually encounter the coronavirus, their body's immune system would then be able to identify the threat and scramble antibodies and killer T cells to fight off the infection. At the time of report, two volunteers have received the shot, out of around 800 recruited for the first phase human trial. Citing the doctors, the BBC reports potential side effects include headache, fever and muscle pains a couple of days after the injection. Oxford professor of vaccinology Sarah Gilbert says she is, quote, very optimistic about the vaccine. However, Oxford Vaccine Group director Andrew Pollard says the team is racing to catch the tail end of the pandemic to conduct the test. This means if Britain flattens the curve too fast, there might not be enough data to see if the vaccine actually works. So there you go, don't get sick. But if you do get sick, it would be for the good of science. Meanwhile, COVID-19 is mutating rapidly and a recent study suggests that no less than three separate groups of the coronavirus have emerged since the initial outbreak in Wuhan, China. The coronavirus is mutating rapidly and the pathogen has already developed into three main branches as of March 4, 2020, according to a UK-German study. Researchers from the University of Cambridge and Germany have used RNA analysis to identify three types of COVID-19 that evolved during the early stages of the pandemic. 
The study is published in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences. Citing the team, the University of Cambridge writes in a news release that COVID-19 Type A is the original human virus genome from the Chinese city of Wuhan. Mutated versions of Type A were discovered in U.S. nationals who reportedly lived in Wuhan. Large numbers of Type A virus were also seen in patients living in the U.S. and Australia. Strangely, the dominant variant in Wuhan was Type B, which was prevalent across East Asia but did not spread much beyond the region. This means either a complex founding event happened in Wuhan or some factors had resisted Type B outside East Asia. Type C is the main COVID-19 variant in Europe. The presence of Type C was detected in early cases from France, Italy, Sweden and England. Yet this variant was absent in samples from patients in mainland China. Researchers also traced the first infections in Italy to Germany and Singapore, both of which had patients with the C variant of the coronavirus. What does all this mean? Well, apparently it's a very big deal. According to the lead author, the ability to trace the virus's family tree has the potential to help identify undocumented COVID-19 infection sources, which can then be quarantined to contain further spread of the disease worldwide. Across the pond, the U.S. has started human trials for its own COVID-19 vaccine in mid-March. According to the Associated Press, intrepid Seattle resident Jennifer Haller is taking a shot for the team as the first person to receive an experimental Wuhan virus vaccine. A U.S. volunteer became the first person to receive an experimental COVID-19 vaccine as part of the first phase of human trials on March 16th, the Associated Press reports. According to Kaiser Permanente, which is funded by the National Institutes of Health to conduct the project, the vaccine eschews dead or inert viruses and instead utilizes messenger RNA or mRNA. Live Science reports the U.S. government has fast-tracked the study without testing on animal models in a bid to bring the vaccine to the market faster. A previous study in molecular theory suggests engineered mRNA could cause ribosomes in human cells to manufacture artificially designed proteins. According to Kaiser Permanente, their vaccine would make cells produce a protein that is found in the outer coating of SARS-CoV-2, which triggers an immune response. If a person who received the vaccine is later infected with COVID-19, their prior immune response may help their body mount a stronger reaction to the real virus infection. Citing U.S. health officials, the Associated Press reports that it takes 12 to 18 months for the authorities to validate a new vaccine. For more news animations and explainers, hit the subscribe and bell button to join the Tomo News family. Thanks for watching.